Looking at the closed Lanzhou noodle shop, the man said, it's too hard. This shop that I have frequented at for two years has shut down. There is a bus stop in front of the door and next to it is a subway station. Even in such a place with high foot traffic, it closed down. This is the Lanzhou noodle shop near a residential area and it seems to have been closed for a long time. The photographer said, alas, it's tough to do business, even in such a good location with residential buildings and apartments nearby, and still it ended up closing down. Business is tough this year. This lady in the video filmed several noodle shops that has closed down. She said, I heard that Lanzhou noodle shop all over the country has closed down these days. Let's go see what the situation is like in Danchen, Henan. The one inside the plaza has also shut down, as well as the Lanzhou noodle shop near the number 3 experimental high school. The one south of the number 2 bridge and the Wanyan Lanzhou noodle shop. This shop is also closed, with a sign on the door saying, gone home for the holidays. The last group of entrepreneurial refugees in 2023 has emerged. As part of the third wave of restaurant closures, they look up to the sky and sigh hanging up shop for rent signs, deciding to close and settle accounts, returning home early for the new year. In the first wave of restaurant closures this year, in the first half of the year, a retaliatory surge of 1.669 million new restaurants with 373,000 closing down. The ratio was one store was shut down for every four stores opened, banding together in poverty. The second wave of closures, 651,000 new restaurants in July and August, but after the summer vacation, 218,000 closed down. Now the ratio is one store closed for every three stores opened. The summer vacation emptied the wallets of people born in the 70s and 80s. The discharge of radioactive water from Japan affected Japanese cuisine and seafood restaurants, and small shops face a crisis of pre-prepared dishes. The third wave of closures, after experiencing the worst golden September and silver October in 10 years, the last batch of restaurateurs did not last. Industry insiders have already predicted that due to frequent turnovers, the closure rate in the catering industry this year will reach 150%. If 100 stores open, 150 stores were shut down. The catering industry is filled with lamentations. Among them, the closure wave of Lanzhou noodle stores, which has attracted so much capital in recent years, was most noticeable. Chinese noodle run through the history of Chinese food culture. Among them, Lanzhou noodles take the top position. Zhu Xiaohu, the founder of Jingxia Jiang Venture Capital, who has invested in L.me and Didi, once said that there are 400,000 noodle shops offline in China, of which 200,000 are Lanzhou noodles. The popularity of Lanzhou noodles in the eyes of the Chinese people is evident. Lanzhou noodles satisfy people's aesthetics pursuit for food. As the soup is refreshing, the beef is tender, the noodles are palatable, and the appetite is tempting. Therefore, the excellent visual and taste characteristics of Lanzhou noodles, combining noodles, soup, meat, flavor, and color into a top dining experience, keep customers coming back. This is also why many investors enter the catering industry to invest in Lanzhou noodles because they are sure to make a profit. However, in today's China, where the economy is hard to revive, Lanzhou noodles have also fallen from grace. The Lanzhou noodle shops that were famous online predicted by Capital to have a market value of over 1 billion or even 5 billion RMB, such as Chen Xianggui, Ma Jiyong, and Zhang Lala, have started their journey from prosperity to gradual closure. For middle aged and young people who enjoy dining, a bowl of noodles costing more than 20 RMB is too much. Moreover, these internet famous noodle shops are beautifully decorated leading the trend in gourmet fashion, and often located in the bustling areas of subways, supermarkets, and shopping malls in first and second tier cities. However, now after three years of pandemic control, many shopping malls are either closed or sparsely crowded, and young people prefer to shop on the underground floors to get their value for money. In such a situation, Lanzhou noodle shops that focus on branding and high-end offerings are naturally abandoned by consumers. In this era of advocating minimalism and embracing alternative products, isn't the Lanzhou noodle shop on the roadside selling for 8 RMB a bowl more attractive?
The vlogger said, Chen Xiangui's beef noodles do not taste good. The noodles lack texture and the chili oil is only chili oil in color, nothing else. As for the beef, I can only say it does not live up to its cost. The grilled meat, I can only describe as spoiled. Taking the kids, three people spent over 190 RMB and we did not feel full. You can get extra noodles, but with such quality noodles, it's not worth it. It's not as good as the noodle shops in your local neighborhood. I've said enough, folks. Avoid these shops. The peak period of Lanzhou noodles was in 2021 when it became the new favorite of venture capital. At that time, a group of new beef noodle stars represented by Ma Ji-yong, Chen Xianggui, and Zhang Lala were favored by many well-known investment institutions with valuations ranging from 100 million to 1 billion RMB. And some capital believed that these Lanzhou noodle shops had a potential value of up to 5 billion RMB. These new stars indeed took advantage of the capital to enter the commercial circles of first and second tier cities with great fanfare and promoted their rapid expansion everywhere. Just in that year, capital poured crazily into noodle shops with 13 rounds of financing, totaling more than 1.44 billion RMB. However, not even two years of glory and now it's news of closure for these beef noodle shops. A table where recycle elemented, now it's tough to do business. Look, I just collected this solid wood dining table, it looks brand new. The noodle shop owner has lost hundreds of thousands this year. It's a bargain for anyone who wants to purchase this table. The restaurant owner, seeing his hard work go up in smoke, couldn't help but just shed tears. He said, today is the third day since the restaurant closed. I didn't expect it. Just when I was cleaning up the last of the stuff, I really couldn't help but cry at the door. Maybe this is the moment an adult breaks down. In 2021, Chen Xianggui spent 200 million RMB just on opening new stores. Chen Xianggui, which debuted in February 2020, had only seven stores at that time. By 2021, it had opened an additional 170 stores, a speed of expansion difficult to achieve without the support of capital. In July 2021, Jiang Jun, the founder of Chen Xianggui, boldly claimed that the number of stores was expected to reach 600 in the next three years. However, by 2022, only over 40 new stores were opened. According to data from Changyan Data, the current number of Chen Xianggui stores is around 230, still hovering around 200. The expansion plan is not going as expected, with the number of stores remaining the same as last year. Zhang Lala, who debuted in the same year as Chen Xianggui, couldn't escape the industry's cold winter either. According to public data in August 2022, Zhang Lala had 71 stores, and as of now, the number is only 88. It's worth noting that at the end of 2021, Zhang Lala had contracted 100 stores nationwide. Now they are opening and closing stores simultaneously with no growth in their expansion plans, even a decline. Ma Jion didn't fare much better, with the number of stores decreasing from 227 at the end of 2022 to 220 stores. It's hard to imagine that these famous beef noodle stores were held as a new trend of the era just two years ago, only to fall into such a dismal state today. How exactly have these beef noodle new stars been demoted to obscurity? One that isn't commented on Chen Xianggui, it's hard to say if it's delicious, but it's certainly expensive. Another said, I don't know why so many people flock to Chen Xianggui. This restaurant should be renamed Chen Xiang Expensive. I'll never go to this place again. Another also commented, please, Chen Xianggui, please leave the Lanzhou beef noodle industry. Remove the word Lanzhou and I'll forgive you. Aside from looking good in photos, it taste is really from the supply chain. The so-called beef broth is too heavy on an essence. This netizen wrote in the comments, Lanzhou noodle soup seems to be very popular recently, such as Chen Xianggui and Zhang Lala. I tried Chen Xianggui and I can only say it was okay. The taste is not as fragrant as that of a local Lanzhou ramen shop, and the beef has no flavor. It is soft and has no texture, but there are more snacks than in the local shop though, so it's better to eat noodles in a local shop. Tenjiangui's beef noodle soup is concocted from bagged ingredients. The big pots in the stores are not used for boiling soup. The other two internet famous noodle shops also receive their share of criticism. Shenzhen netizen posted, who is recommending Ma Jiyong Lanzhou beef 
noodles. I tried it and it looked okay, but eating it was like chewing wax. The soup was bland and I couldn't taste the freshness and sweetness of beef soup. The beef bone is half prepared and heated with a strong, unpleasant beef odor. Don't expect me to come a second time. Farewell to Ji Yong. A blogger bought a meat bun from Chen Xianggui and commented, Chen Xianggui's beef noodles are falsely advertised. I dug through the bun and did not find a single piece of meat. From the comments above, it's easy to see why these internet famous noodle shops have declined. Firstly, the noodles are expensive. The cheapest bowl at Chen Xianggui is 28 RMB, while Ma Jiyong and Zhang Lala charge 26 RMB per bowl. The unit price of beef noodles from these new nobility brands is generally over 25 RMB. They typically bundle their noodles with drinks, grilled pancakes, side dishes, or skewers in set meals. On average, the per person cost of a meal is over 40 RMB. This price in the current economic downturn is extremely burdensome for some people used to eating lanzhou noodles at small roadside stores for around 15 RMB. The low cost effectiveness is another reason. Many consumers have expressed that the beef broth is likely to be pre-prepared dish, possibly from a soup packet or even refrigerated overnight. Who would spend 20 to 30 RMB on such a meal? Consumers are choosing not to pay this intelligence tax. Another reason is that these noodle shops target shopping malls and bustling commercial areas in the first and second tier cities, meaning they follow the model of shopping center restaurants. Compared to roadside stores, their operating costs are significantly higher as chain stores emphasize brand culture. Their prices are naturally several times higher than those of roadside stores. A blogger focusing on restaurant investment commented, Chen Xianggui, a brand known for its 98 RMB super large bowl of noodles, is no longer popular. Around noon, there are only three or four tables of customers. Let's analyze this business model. Founded in Shanghai in 2020, Chen Xianggui expanded to over 200 stores within three years through three rounds of financing. Once valued at 1 billion RMB, by last August, there were 237 stores. By early March this year, it had shrunk to 190 stores, losing nearly 50 stores, indicating negative growth. It's not just Chen Xianggui. Brands like Hefu Noodles, Ma Jiyong, Wu Ye Ban Mian are also stagnating. Overall, these new noodle shops are shrinking. The cheapest bowl of Chen Xianggui is 27 RMB, and with a meat skewer combo, the average spent per customer is over 40 RMB, much higher than street side shops, especially now. With declining foot traffic in malls, increased competition in the same category and scenario, and significant customer diversion, each brand is struggling with customer flow. Currently, brands like Hefu Noodles, Ma Ji Yong, and Chen Xianggui face significant challenges. In fact, during the years of China's economic boom, taking a high-end route had many successful examples. However, in a declining economy, the last thing one should do is go high-end. A few days ago, Best Store Co., a brand that prided itself on high-end snacks, finally bowed to reality. It implemented the biggest price reduction in 17 years, with over 300 products averaging a 22% decrease, the highest drop being 45%. Yang Yingfen, the newly appointed chairman and general manager, even stated bluntly, if everyone thinks you're expensive, then you must change. If you don't, you'll collapse. In the coffee and tea industry, aside from Luckin Coffee and Coddy Coffee's constant price wars, leading new tea brands like Hey Tea and Nayuki are also exploring lower prices and launching price reductions. Drink costing over 30 RMB have disappeared from their menus. Some time ago, a high-end bakery in Shanghai named Dika Bakery, popular on its opening day with two-hour queues, closed down in less than five months. People don't have as much money anymore. High end used to represent a better material pursuit, but now people just want to feel full. Isn't it better to go for alternatives? As a result, while high end offerings are cooling down, street snacks from smaller cities and towns are quietly entering Beijing and becoming the new pursuit of city workers. Chao Shi Yao Bo started in 2016, initially selling duck necks from a cart. Focusing on affordability, after gaining popularity among the ordinary working class in small cities and towns, in April this year, a Chongqing resident named Huang Diandian was surprised to find that it was available for delivery at her Beijing home. She immediately placed an order, including chicken hearts, fragrant tofu, potato slices, and instant noodles. After tasting it, she remarked, this is the flavor of our Chongqing. Even for her who can handle spicy food, she reminded her eager colleagues to choose the mild version. 
as a medium spice would be too much. Such an stimulating experience didn't deter others, but attracted more to try it. Wang Yong'an, a Sichuanese who worked in the Shanghai restaurant industry for many years, watched as this niche Sichuan-flavored spicy braised snack from Chengdu's Pixian County became an overnight viral sensation among food bloggers, which each blogger to on the challenge to try this spicy snack. Seasoned restaurateurs quickly sensed the new popularity. Wang Yong'an was inspired to franchise for the first time. Compared to other Chinese cuisine brands, franchising Chao Shi Yaobo had a low barrier to entry, requiring only a 28,000 RMB franchise fee and two or three days of training, a store could be open with just two people. Wang Yuan's Beijing store, including a security deposit and rent, cost less than 100,000 RMB in total. The headquarters management of franchisees is relatively loose. Apart from a fixed design requirement for the storefront sign, everything from store decoration and equipment to ingredients is up to the franchisee. Thanks to this low-cost, loose model, Chao Shi Yaobo has opened nearly 20 stores in Beijing this year, all small in size and primarily focused on delivery. One of Wang Yonggan's franchise stores, only 40 square meters in size, gets over 90% of its revenue from delivery. This year, many small town restaurant brands have quietly entered Beijing. Tasty and Burgers, originating from a restaurant in Jiangxi in 2012, initially specialized in handmade pizzas. In 2017, they started offering burgers, quickly gaining customer favors with their fresh baked burger buns. Tasty and then focused on rural areas, continue expanding its reach. The brand now boasts 5,143 outlets nationwide, ranking fourth among fried chicken and burger brands trailing only behind Wallace, KFC, and McDonald's. According to KN data, over 48% of Tastian outlets are concentrated in third-tier cities and below. At a Tastian burger store near Beijing West Railway Station, a customer frowning complained to the staff, how much longer do I have to wait? Can you give me a definite answer? She had been waiting for nearly 30 minutes since placing an order, with 10 orders still ahead of hers. Before the staff could respond, she lost her patience and demanded a refund twice. Xu Yuan, an assistant manager at a Tastian store in Fuzhou, is accustomed to such scenes. Tastian mandates that fried food not only sold within 30 minutes must be discarded. To minimize waste, Xu Yuan's store hardly pre-makes any food. Burger doughs has to be fermented, rolled out, and baked on site, which alone takes about 10 minutes. On Super Tuesday, their membership day, it's common for dine-in and delivery orders to wait for half an hour. A loyal fan of Tastian claims that Tastian is cleaner and more upscale than Wallace, yet cheaper than KFC and McDonald's. Tastian, no longer content with just rural growth, has now entered Beijing. Apart from snacks and fast food, tea beverage brands targeting rural markets are also penetrating first-tier cities. Cha Ji's store in Beijing's Hesheng Hui had once seen queues of over 3,000 cups. In the past half year, Mi Xue Ice cream and tea opened only 20 new stores in Beijing. Cha Panda is also quietly expanding into first tier cities. Its prospectus shows that in 2020, 8.7% of its stores were in first tier cities, but by the first quarter of this year, the proportion had risen to over 10%. These dining brands rising in rural markets have won consumer favor largely by finding their niche in the gaps left by giants, affordability. Food industry giants have also recognized this issue. According to financial reports, the average per person spending at Heidi Lao Hot Pot had decreased from 105 RMB last year to 102.9 RMB in the first half of this year. Taeyo Chinese sauerkraut fish's average spending dropped from 78 RMB to 75 RMB. Song Hot Pot average is 121 RMB, down 9 RMB. Shabu Shabu and Cho Cho Hot Pot average spending each decreased by 4.9 RMB. The tea beverage sector is similar. Now, Yoku's financial report shows that its average order value is 32.4 RMB, down over 25% from 43.5 RMB in the same period last year. After Now, Yoku's average order value dropped to 30 RMB, the average daily order volume per store began to rise to 363.4 orders, up about 5% from 346.2 orders in the same period last year. This shows that in the future, cost effectiveness and value for money will be among the most important factors for consumers. In the current wave of restaurant closures, the industry's internal competition is becoming increasingly fierce. It is incredibly challenging to carve out a share in the dining industry. However, the most critical point is that the zero COVID policy enforced by the Chinese government has caused economic damage that is difficult to repair in the short term.
Currently, China's youth unemployment rate is soaring, with college graduates facing the most severe moment of graduating into an unemployment. The prevalence of full-time children relying on their parents, expiring top-tier mystery boxes containing food products are selling out on e-commerce platforms. On the other hand, many factories are not receiving orders, forcing workers to take early holidays and return home for the new year. Everyone is thinking about how to save money to get through its difficult year. In such an investment environment, opening a store is synonymous with making a loss. In fact, in 2023, many industries are facing a life and death situation, including manufacturing, automotive, catering services, and the semiconductor industry. Despite the Chinese authorities' habit of concealing data, the figure released by Chinese financial media are still shocking. According to the corporate credit agency, Chi Cha Cha, as of early December, 10,900 semiconductor-related companies in China have been cancelled or revoked, an increase of nearly 90% compared to last year. This means on average 31 semiconductor companies are disappearing every day. According to the paper, citing catering industry media, Chang Ying 88, nearly 7,000 entertainment business closed in the first 11 months of this year. The list continues with restaurant businesses and apparel companies. The Chinese government also acknowledges that private enterprises provide 80% of China's employment. Thus, behind these alarming closure figures lie, lies the changed destinies of countless workers. The outside world explains the difficult situation of China's economic recovery with factors such as the China-US trade war, state advancement and private retreat, and the bursting of real estate bubble. Many people regard the Chinese Communist Party led by Xi Jinping as a root cause of all these failings. In recent years, the CCP has vigorously promoted the policy of state advancement and private retreat, suppressing the living space of private enterprises. In foreign relations, the CCP stands as a rising power has led to sanctions and war wariness and Western countries like the United States. Gradually removing production chains once closely linked with the West out of China. The Chinese people are tasting the bitter fruit of these actions, with many looking to run, that is to flee from China.